Okay, good morning everyone. Thank you for uh, joining the class today. And um, I've uh, done on the recording of the lecture. Uh, just a little, uh, uh, we had some problems with uh, my connection in uh, the first hour. So I'm just hoping uh, things, things are okay with the connectivity over here. Um, but in case things are, you know, anything goes wrong, I'll just turn off the the video. But um, things seem okay. It was seemed okay in the second hour, but anyway. Um, let's pray, and then we will get started. I just want to invite uh, somebody uh, to please unmute your mic and uh, lead a class in prayer. And we will get started, please. Father, we thank you for this time as we uh, move ahead, Lord Jesus, for our lesson, Lord God. Help each one of us to, Lord Jesus, to understand and help each one of us to open up our heart, Lord Jesus, as we learn, Lord God, let your anointing flow to our pastor and let it touch each, uh, each one of us, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So... We have been uh, talking about uh, this uh, various aspects of uh, church and ministry administration uh, in our previous cl uh, class earlier this week. Uh, we talked about the forming of uh, a legal entity or an, you know, uh, an organization, uh, the importance of that, and um, uh, and just some practical things on how to go about doing that. So um, we will now go into the next chapter, the next topic, which is organizational structure. Okay. I'm going to try and share my uh, the PDF. This, of course, has been put out as a PDF in the classwork section. Um, so I am sharing the notes. It's already available to you. Uh, hopefully um, you can see it, yeah. All right, so we want to talk about church and ministry organization structure. So, uh, you know, when you get started uh, in your ministry with the church, um, Initially, uh, things are very, very simple, you know, and I remember when we started All People's Church uh, in uh, February of 2001, uh, it was just uh, Amy and me, and then, you know, a few people joined us, but basically we did everything, you know. Uh, we did the, we had uh, two speakers, two mics, we had one keyboard, <laughs> one overhead projector those those days we had you know an old more old-fashioned overhead projector not what we use these days so we did everything you know we would uh, when we started using a venue near our home so we would go arrange the chairs before the service started arrange the chairs uh, set up the pa system set up the projector a to z you know we would we would take up the offering everything we just did. There was nobody else, you know, from A to Z. It was just uh, us, some, basically Amy, myself, uh, and uh, there were two others who were helping us, uh, Georgie and his wife. So we would just do everything. We, we did everything. And then, you know, slowly people started coming to church. And then, you know, we, people wanted to help. So we would say, okay, you take care of arranging the chairs. You do this, you do that. Slowly we you know, kind of, as we grew, we gave uh, responsibilities to people. And then eventually, uh, 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 the, the first people uh, as, as staff um, who would, uh, came on to help us, I mean, we first of all had an accountant to come to handle the finances. That, this was after we registered the trust. So we talked about registering the trust last class. So we registered trust, I think, in the month of April or something. We started in February, sometime in April, I think we formally registered the legal entity. And then we uh, we were working with an accounting firm 
So a person from that accounting firm would come just for like two hours. We, there was not much to be done. So just for two hours a week. Uh, and uh, she would, you know, enter all our uh, accounting information into the system. We will talk about IT systems a little later on what we need. So we bought a license for a small accounting package. Uh, it was called Tally. And uh, and then she would just enter, you know, okay, this was the offering that came, uh, you know, th there was nothing, hardly any transactions. So it was very easy within two or three hours, she would do her work. So weekly she would come update it. That was her work. That was the first person we had as a paid service. And that was, we were just paying for a few hours a week. Um, then later on, I think it was in, uh, Perhaps the next year, I think it was in 2002, we hired one person as an admin person. So this was our first full-time staff. And he would just basically help with different things like booking the venue, uh, you know, writing all these, you know, making, keeping track of things, uh, helping with, you know, any other work that needed to be done, making phone calls, uh, handling those kinds of things. He was our first person, one person. Uh, uh, working as staff, uh, and uh, actually, he he was. Uh, I think he used to divide his time, like you know, between he was he was paid he was on was paid by the company. So I was running a business as well. So he was paid by the business, but he would spend some of his time for the church as well. You know, so he would do admin work for the church. He would do admin work for the company, but he was on on the roles of the company. But he was the first person who was you know like a staff to help us uh, and then I, it was only later on i think in 2004 or five i forget so it was you know four or five years later that we uh, took on uh, a youth pastor and then uh, Pastor Jay Kumar, you joined us at that time. So I think it is, I forget the exact year, but around 2005 or 2000, yeah, 2005 or six, when uh, you know we began to hire people to be part of uh, as full-time staff. So this is after four or five years staff. So people began to join. So then, you know, we had, uh, we hired a few, few more staff, uh, we had a full-time admin person, uh, and then you know people started joining us. So uh, over time, you know, more and more people started becoming part of the organization. So the organization was growing. So we had IT people, we had media people, we had uh, full-time pastors, uh, we had uh, people on the administration side. Right. So slowly grew. So when you add people as staff what you eventually will need is an, what we refer to as an organization structure. That means, so here you can see uh, in the notes, uh, the organizational structure or organization structure. Uh, the structure describes how activities, which means roles and responsibilities, and information, which is decision-making, controls, etc are set up within an organization to achieve the organization's goals and objectives, right? So that's, you need to have a structure, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. So eventually as we hire, started having people, pastors joining us, we needed to say, okay, this is the pastoral team. Uh, this is, you know, the senior pastor. This is the associate pastor. This is the worship pastor. This is the youth pastor. This is the children's church pastor. And uh, then, you know, we needed to say, okay, here's the admin people, here are the accounting people, here's the, you know, the media people, here are the IT people, and how will they all work with each other? And what are their roles? What are their responsibilities? So we needed to create some sort of a structure uh, for all of us to work together. And then that kept growing and it will continue to grow in, 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 the, in, in time to come. So this structure is important and, uh, uh, and so we're going to talk today on, you know, how do we, as you grow as an organization, what are the structure you need? What are the structure, what are some of the things you keep in mind as you design? So we, we use the term organizational design. That means you're designing the structure. What should it look like? 
right? So you have a structure, but the structure should be designed. So you'd say organization design. How do you design that structure? And, if, and, and what are the things you should keep in mind as you design the structure? That's what we're going to look at. So in general, and I'm speaking in general terms, uh, broadly speaking, you know, there are four types of organizational structure. Uh, one would be functional structure. That means uh, you're creating a structure that's that's based on the functions or the roles that people will do, right? So there's admin, there is uh, you know, media, there is IT, there is accounting. So those are functions. And you create a simple structure around those functions. So that's called a very, that's a functional structure. Now, uh, uh, as the organization grows and let's say it is expanding, uh, you know, uh, you would then create what is known as a divisional or a multi-divisional structure. So division is then uh, by department and within each department, you would have multiple functions, you know. So, or in, in church side, you can think of areas of ministry and within each area of ministry, you'll have multiple functions to people doing that. Sometimes divisional can be even regional, you know, so you may want to uh, do, no, you know, if you're looking at a country like a nation of India, you might say, well, we have grown and we are, expanding across the nation. So we will create it by regions, you know, North, South, North India, South India, West India, and East India, break it down like that. So it would grow, it, you could have some, some sort of, sort of a divisional or multi-divisional structure, which is a little bigger. Uh, many organizations today uh, like to be what we refer to as a flat structure. That means they want to keep the number of levels as minimal as possible. So they say we are a flat structure, we are a flat organization. And that is very good because uh, it makes people feel like, you know, we're all together, we, you know, there's not too much of a hierarchy, uh, everybody's accessible. And as a flat structure, people can work together very quickly. You know, people can talk, communicate, make decisions, move fast. So those are some of the advantages of a flat structure. And then there is what is known as matrix structure, which is a very complicated structure. Uh, you don't find too much of that, meaning there is um, a division of people, both uh, horizontally and vertically, and people can move across various intersections of this matrix, and they can be involved in multiple roles and multiple functions. So that's kind of a matrix, vertical, horizontal, people move around within the matrix. It actually is very complicated because uh, uh, people are moving around or people can serve multiple roles and functions. Uh, you don't find that too often, but that's possible that sometimes people set up a matrix structure, right? We will come into the details. This is just an overview. We'll come into the details on that. Now, you know, uh, a great example and uh, in the Bible about organizational structure, you find it, uh, and I have, I have mentioned this before, is on, in, in, in the organization of the tabernacle of David. So after David became king, uh, and, and you find this in, First Chronicles 23 and chapter 25 and chapter 28. It's it's worth, it's interesting to read, to look at. You know, um, he brought the tabernacle, uh, he brought the Ark of the Covenant into the city of David. And uh, uh, he built this tabernacle. And then he appointed people. And it is very interesting to see the organization. You know, he had uh, people who would take care of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the maintenance of the tabernacle. So they, they would take all the things needed to be done around the tabernacle, keep the, the ministry running. And then he had the priests, of course, were there. And then he had singers, musicians, or 200, uh, 250 plus, or something like that, musicians and singers. So he had them. And they were all organized with one hour slots uh, so that there was continuous praise and worship happening in the tabernacle. And in First Chronicles 28, uh, what David, when, so, so you know, he set everything up in the tabernacle. It's very interesting how he set, set up. So there were about 8,000 people in all, about 5,000 people to take care of the maintenance, about 200, 200, between 200 and 300 people doing worship. There were all these priests involved. Um, so, you know, a lot of people, very well organized. Um, and, uh, you know, 
so it is all put together very well. In First Chronicles 28, uh, when David uh, talks about the plans for the temple he wanted Solomon to build, he says, you know, all these ideas and plans were given to me by the Holy Spirit. First Chronicles 28, verse 11, 12, and 19. Holy Spirit gave me these ideas. So we can also, you know, work backwards and say, you know, most likely it's the Holy Spirit who gave him all the ideas to how to organize the tabernacle and put people in place. Okay, so that's just one example of organizational structure and design we see in the Bible, and there, there are, of course, others we can talk about. But let's get into the practical things so as far as the church or the ministry is concerned. You know, I'll go through this and then we'll have time for questions and uh, discussion. Right? So why is it necessary to have a well-designed organization, you know, as, especially as you grow. Like I said, in the early days, you know, one person is doing everything. You know, I used to be the accountant. I would come back from service and we had a little notebook and I would write down what was the offering that we received on Sunday to keep it ready because on Monday or Tuesday, the accountant would come and she would put it into the system and all that. And, you know, what were the expenses? I'll keep all the bills ready. But you know, over time, we have, uh, you know, full-time accountant now was very busy. And, uh, you know, and we also have, in addition to a full-time accountant, we have an external accountant who comes in so there's a check and then every every three months there are audits being done and every there's an annual audit being done uh, and so there are two external aid, uh, accounting firms that are involved so you know it's gone from one person who works who used to work two to three hours a week to now, you know, multiple arrangements uh, to handle accounting. So over time, uh, the organization is going to grow. Uh, and while it grows, it is important to design the structure very well, right? Why do you need to have organization? Um, here are some reasons, and these are not the only reasons, but just, these are some reasons. So that responsibility is of course, clear, so people we'll know who is responsible for what. There's no ambiguity there. Uh, and therefore, there's no confusion within roles. Right? Okay, so within your role, this is what you do, this is what you do. So we have a well-designed organization. There's good coordination between different roles and functions. People can work, it's like a machine. They can all work together very well. Uh, there is good communication, quick communication, ideas, skills, resources. People can communicate and share easily. This will make decision making very quick, right? People, we can make quick decisions. So we don't want to waste time. You know, we want to move fast. We want to be efficient. Um, so overall, the organization is efficient and productive. And uh, you have a nice work, a healthy work environment. So people come, they enjoy working in an organization that's well designed. Uh, there is less stress, uh, less conflict. And all of this is influenced by the design of the organization, you know, how it has been structured. Uh, it has an impact on uh, on all of these things. So having an organization structure that is well designed gives us all these benefits. You know, you can think of think of it like a well-designed machine, like a car or something, you know. If the if it is well-designed, it has a lot of benefits. People enjoy what, what has been well-designed, right? So what I want to impress on us is that uh, the organizational structure and design must be intentional. So we just said, you know, uh, the structure it should be and thank you, Daryl. Uh, it should be systematic and planned. Uh, it shouldn't be too complex, and it must be continuously improved. Right. So, what are some things, questions to ask to determine if you know our design is good? 
uh, design or what must we keep in mind as we are designing the organizational structure. First, and, and these are some very simple questions, but there are important questions. Number one, is the organizational design aligned to the people we are serving? That means the structure, the design we are creating for our organization, uh, it must be aligned to the, you know, the, 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 the work we are doing to serve people. So we don't want to create functions. We don't want to create uh, things in the organization. which is not aligned to the vision, mission, and purpose uh, of what we are trying to do. Example, example. So suppose you are serving I uh, suppose the church is serving people who are from the villages. Then you don't need some, you know, complicated uh, area of ministry on uh, something that uh, the people are not in involved in. For example, I'm just thinking, you know, you don't have, uh, okay, uh, we're going to have a ministry or a, or a part of our organization structure ministry that is going to, uh, there's going to be a call center for these people. You know, they may not even use it. You know, there are people from the village. They just need you to come. They would want you to come to the house and pray. So there's no point in setting up a call center if these people that you're serving are not going to be calling for prayer. You know, they may just want to come and sit and talk to you, or, or uh, you know, there's no point in you know having ministry for financial planning. Uh, and having you know uh, skilled people in that if these these are village people they don't they don't know anything about that or even if you want to do it it's on a, it has to be at their level where they are so some you know so basically you need to have your organization design and structure and what you're doing the kind of people putting the activities it should be aligned to the people you are serving right? there shouldn't be a mismatch then. Uh, you'll be wasting a lot of time and effort. So that's one basic question. Second, does it enable people who are working in the organization to add value and contribute meaningfully? So the organization structure, is there, there, is there enough space and is there enough room, space and opportunity in the way you've set up so that people can give, uh, can add value and, and contribute meaningfully? You know, so people shouldn't feel lost Oh, you know, I don't know where I am. I don't know what my role is. Well, I don't know how what I do is contributing. And neither should people feel like I'm a machine. You know, I just I just come and do my work and go. And I don't know whether it's benefiting the organization or not. You know, so or if people have ideas, uh, if people have some inputs they want, can they give it to the organization? Are they encouraged to give? Is it is it conducive for that? So you want to keep that in mind. The third one is this. You know, is, uh, is is there an alignment between the structure and the employee, the people you have, their strengths, weaknesses, and motivations? Is there a mismatch? Uh, so the design, the structure, is it matching? Is there a match with the kind of people who are there and what they are good at? You know, so if there's a mismatch, then you're not going to get work done. Uh, something is wrong. Either you have to change the people or change the, the structure. You know, so if, 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 if you know, you've, you've set up an IT department and you're, you're employing people who don't know IT, then that's a big problem, right? So the question is, do you need the IT department or do you need what these people are bringing? Yeah. So, and that happens many, many times in churches, you know, they say, okay, I want to do this, but they're not hiring the right people. They're not bringing in the right people to do that. They are, you know, they're bringing all their friends or, you know, people they like in the church, they're adding them to the organization, but those are not the people who are going to be able to fill the structure you want to fill. So there's a mismatch, and, you know, and that's a problem. Uh, number four, 
uh, does the structure enable the department so units to function well right so uh, is each a unit or department functioning well able to function well and uh, number five uh, is there good cooperation between different just give an example you know suppose there's a person a is doing certain work maybe she is writing a, a, a document and does some work then if she's forwarding it to person b who is not adding any value he's just okay it comes to his inbox then he forwards it to person c and a person C is not doing anything with that document and he forwards it to person D. So person A is doing the work, person D is the one who needs that finished work and is going to make use of that. Then if our structure requires the that email to go through two people in between who are not adding any value to that then you know what these two people are actually useless and this two-step process here is an unnecessary step here there's no value add uh, it may only delay delay things by you know a few hours or sometimes by a few days because if this person doesn't check his email, it will not get forwarded to this person. And uh, when that person sees and is there, it remembers to forward it, only it will get here. The most simplest thing is person A does the work, who needs it? Person D, send it directly, send it directly to person D. That's the most efficient. So we need to eliminate these kinds of things inside the organization. Right? So look at it. What is the minimalistic? What is the simplest way to get things done? Uh, take out unnecessary uh, steps which don't add value. It is more of a formality. You know? So eventually person C appears to be the person doing the work, but actually the work was done by person A. Now that's unnecessary. We don't need that. It's okay if person D knows that person A did, did the work and it goes directly to person D. It's perfectly fine, you know. So we don't need these things here in between, right? So that's just an example about how to keep things simple. Two more things here. Are there checks and balances have controls? In the organization, especially as it gets bigger and bigger, uh, you know, one person is not going to be able to keep an eye on everything. So we have to introduce in our design of the system checks and balances. We have to introduce controls inside the system itself, the way we design the organization to minimize waste and resources. So uh, uh, you know, at different levels, wherever there's a usage of resources and time and people and money, uh, there has to be checks and balances uh, so that these things are kept on track uh, and not wasted. And it has to become part of the design of the organization. All right, so we went through eight uh, tests or eight questions to ask as you're thinking about the organization's design uh, to help us you know, make sure it's, it's done well. Now, there are factors that can affect or limit the design or limit how much you can do, right? Sometimes there could be external factors like government regulations. Government may say, you know, uh, an organization, like for example, a religious organization, uh, like uh, a church or a ministry in India, uh, is not allowed to do certain things. You know, uh, we, we can't take people's money and uh, invest it in, in you know, certain areas. So that those kinds of things are ruled out, or and and a religious organization cannot do A, B, and C. So those things are ruled out. So automatically, based on regulations, you know, you have to make sure that your structure is in a certain way. 
uh, sometimes there could be the trustees who are not aligned to the way certain things should be done. So that could also be a limiting factor. Uh, other internal things is, you know, like we said, they may not be the right people or the finances resources may not be there. Uh, they, they could be cultural clashes or they could be internal politics. So these are the things that affect the organization, you know, and we have our structure. So we have to be careful. So when I say culture, for example, uh, you know, it could work both ways, but let me just give this side as an example. You, you know, you may want a very flat organization, right? But let's say you hire a pastor who likes hierarchy. You know, he likes to have people, you know, on many levels below him. He doesn't like people just walking in and treating him as a peer. Uh, he wants, you know, three, four levels down and all of that. Then there's there's a clash in culture because the design you're trying to have is a flat structure, but the person you have hired or maybe multiple people you've hired want hierarchy. They want power play, power to be at, you know, power play. So then there's a clash. Uh, it's uh, between what you're trying to create as an organization and the kind of people you have brought in to the organization, it's, you know, there's a limiting factor there. So we have to be careful about all of these things, okay? Now, I want to just quickly share with you as a case study about APC, and i shared a little bit about how we evolved as an organization. I'll just go through that and give you some thoughts to think about uh, and so on. So uh, at APC, this is our organizational structure at a very high level, right? Uh, and this evolved over time. So it didn't happen from day one. Uh, so uh, it evolved over time. So. Now, how we have divided our area uh, the, the structure is on on one side here on the on the on the far right side are what we call as uh, uh, departments. These are areas of our ministry which are more operational in nature. That means uh, they're not directly doing ministry, but they are supporting the ministry, right? And so we have, uh, most of these people are church staff. Uh, some volunteers may help here and there, but most of them are full-time stuff you know and uh, and so the way we have uh, now some some areas of of these roles are not filled up we will eventually have people filling these roles but which we are working towards so we have a person who's in charge of all the operations and then we'll have department heads. So people are heading up these various departments. So accounting, office administration, communications, uh, human side, media and digital. We'll have heads of these departments of people working in departments. Right? We have various ministries. So the spiritual areas, right? The spiritual aspects of the ministry, uh, or catalyst, which is school outreach, so the so this is called the hub and spoke organizational model, 
right? So let me try to present this again. Um, today's been quite a challenging day here on this uh, connection. I'm not sure. Anyway, we will finish in a few minutes. All right, so, uh, you know, what, what I was saying is uh, in part of many, most churches, uh, volunteers play a big role. So, for instance, at APC, uh, you know, the last time we counted when, when we were functioning before the lockdown, we had over 300 volunteers across all our locations in Bangalore. So volunteers play a big role. And this structure, this hub and spoke model, uh, is, is a very good way to engage volunteers. So I just want to quickly walk, walk you through it. So the hub, which is the center part, is pastors and ministry leaders, as you saw earlier. Uh, the pastors and ministry leaders form the hub. And right around, because they are the ones who have the vision and direction for the various ministries that need to be done. Right? because it's a spiritual ministry. Then around that are the staff that is, um, you know, church staff, the IT, the media, the various other well, part of the church staff. You know? So they, and then come the red that you, who are again surrounding, Yellow areas that you see are the various. So we can have many ministries say Catholic. We may have missions. We may have a lot of trees happening. So these are uh, the spokes. What happens is, for each ministry, we are able to form teams, and the teams are basically made up of our pastors or ministry leaders who will be in charge. We also have uh, our all to that, and then cheers. Now, this is a hub, and uh, 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 one volunteer can actually be part of many of these, and that's the, that's what actually happens in practice. So, a volunteer may be part of the worship team. The same volunteer may go on mission trips, and the same volunteer may serve in a Christian professionals, and volunteer also serve in, uh, uh, let's say, college outreach. You know, so this this volunteer can be, you know easily part of many ministry areas and each ministry area is being led by a different pastor or ministry leader and involved as needed you know the IT team will, media team will maybe be involved and so many such groups and so this hub and spoke model uh, you know, helps us uh, in, in, in doing many things in a very very uh, flexible manner so Keep this in mind, and as you think about uh, you know, setting up uh, your organization structure, the last few things uh, is you know uh, at at some point the organization may become national or maybe even grow internationally, and then you need to think of restructuring the organization. Usually, it's done by regions. You know, like I mentioned at the very beginning, you can think of the various regions of your country or various regions of the on a global scale. Uh, uh, but let's just uh, dismiss uh, the meeting, the class. We will pick up next week. Um, I'm really sorry about my connection. Right now, My uh, I'm not able to see, um, see the class. I, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but um, I apologize for this. Uh, let's... Uh, um, Let's, uh, we will close the class and, uh, you know, we will connect again next week. All right. Okay. God bless everyone. Thank you. Sure, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.